again, everyone, is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, here with... Shot Manager Jason. And, uh, because of popular demand, we are going to do a special video specifically on uh, waterproofing connections coming out of your watertight cylinder. And I'm talking specifically about electrical connections. So, let's take a look at a bunch of different ways to poke holes in your expensive cylinder. So we tried to put together um, an array of different possible things that you would want to be adding to your waterproof cylinder, your watertight uh, cylinder. Starting with a, uh, a test hose, so for low frequency radios you want to have uh, a test hose that comes out and you run your low frequency antenna through it and you cap it off and you can also uncap it and blow through it and that'll pressurize your cylinder and allow you to look for leaks. If you have a high frequency antenna, you need to run that out of your bulkhead. We're gonna use this as a fake uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna. So we're gonna show you what that looks like. You may want to use some bullet connectors for uh, electrical connections coming off. Maybe you're running lights or motors or that kind of thing so we're going to talk about that and then we're going to talk about these fancy waterproof connectors that we carry here at the dry docks uh, the idea being that this uh, slips on over here these connect like this and then you tighten this down and this is a waterproof connection but you need to have one end of this uh, coming into uh, or out of your watertight cylinder then you may have uh, a single wire. So um, perhaps you're running an external waterproof servo uh, and you want to run the three wires for that out. We'll talk about waterproofing a single wire. And then uh, a connection, a, uh, a, a connector. Uh, and in this particular case, we're just going to show you an XT30, which is one of our favorite connections here. So without any further delay, let's, uh, let's get started. Jason, why don't you start with the uh, the test hose here? So, what you're going to want to do is uh, drill into your watertight bulkhead um, a hole uh, the same diameter as this brass tube. In this particular case, it was one eighth of an inch. You're going to push it in until about a quarter of an inch is sticking out. Now, you can use thin CA to secure it in place, and then in the back, you've got some sticking out there as well. You can run a bead. Uh, of CA around the outside of that. And I prefer like a medium viscosity cyanoacrylate glue. Um, ideally something that's perhaps uh, rubber reinforced so it's got a little bit of uh, flexibility to it. The other thing that you are gonna wanna do before you put this in, it's a good idea to rough up the outside diameter of this tube with sandpaper or the, uh, the cutting disc on your rotary tool just so that it's not smooth and the glue has something to bite into. So let's uh, well, let's go ahead and do this, we might as well. we'll. Put a dab of glue around the outside. And then you can actually, if you twist the tube, it'll make sure it goes all through the inside. We're gonna hit it with some accelerator. All right, that's locked into place. Now, the way that this you would do this, if you're running your low frequency antenna out there, you would feed it through from the back. Now your antenna is sticking out. It's probably gonna be like 30 inches long. And then you would feed it through the hose until it's all the way back. We're not gonna do that because it's kind of a pain in the butt. And then after it's in there, you just slip that hose onto that brass nipple that you made. And now you have a waterproof connection here. The only thing you need to do now is make a little plug out of some brass rod stuff it in the end and you've got yourself a, uh, a waterproof test hose and uh, receiver outlet for your cylinder. Similarly speaking, and uh, let's just go ahead and do this because we might as well, we're going to do the same thing. And you're going to want a little bit longer tube for these gigahertz antennas. All right, and the reason being is uh, we can stick our gigahertz antenna out there. 
you need to put some heat shrink around the outside. Now, I like using the uh, heat shrink that has the glue, the adhesive on the inside. Um, again, don't forget to rough up your brass tube. You slip this over. And now we are going to heat that up with our torch. And when the glue starts coming out the end, you know that it's sealed. Now, let's talk about this because I know some people are like, oh no, the water's gonna come down the hose. Okay, yes. Now, let's talk about this. If you're using a high frequency radio, um, your antenna must always be above the surface of the water in order for the boat to have reception. With that being the case, so if you take a look at this, there's rubber sheathing all up the um, cable up the, the coaxial antenna and then this is all waterproof and this is all waterproof. When you strip back this, uh, this plastic coating, you end up exposing the actual antenna itself. And there's an opening here that could allow water to flow down the plastic sheathing of the wire and into your cylinder but it takes a lot of water pressure for that to happen. So um, this is not a concern because in a gigahertz boat, this is always above the surface of the water. You're always operating at shallow depths. So there's no water pressure to force that down. Now, if you sink your boat and it's sitting on the bottom of a 30 foot pond for a couple of days, yeah, you might get a couple of drips come out into your cylinder. But uh, if that, happens you've got other things to worry about <laughs> bullet connectors so um, we use these not overly often we, we like more connectors um, but these are a little bit more flexible in terms of, uh, of installation so there is uh, a male and a female side the male side and the female side we're gonna take the female side now I'm also gonna note in some of them there's a little hole right here at the base Ours don't have that. If there's a little hole at the base, obviously when we put this in the bulkhead, the water can flow in to our cylinder, which is not super awesome. So we're gonna take that female side, we're gonna push it in through the back of the hole that we drilled, which is the exact diameter of the bullet connector. And then the same thing, we're gonna run now obviously before we install the connector, you will have already soldered your wire to it, all right? I'm assuming you guys know that. This would be terrible to try and solder into. So solder the connection to the bullet connector, push it through. Now it's sticking out. You can seal it from this side as well. And then you've got your connection on the other side that just simply slips in and you've got your connection. Now, this is all exposed to the water. If this is a, a power bearing connection, like a positive 12 volt connection, you're gonna get corrosion on the outside. So if that's the case, you wanna put heat shrink around as much of this as possible and then you can put a little grease around the outside. Um, these are gold uh, connectors, so they, they don't um, tend to corrode like, you know, like uh, brass and that kind of thing would. But that's a bullet connector if you wanted to do it that that way. Next up, waterproof connection. Now there's two different ways of doing this. Um, so these are typically used for like LED lighting outputs and that kind of thing. Uh, or you can use this as a power input. Now these particular ones are, are pretty small gauge, but you can get them in larger gauge, which would be suitable for main power for your cylinder. You're gonna drill a hole the diameter of this inside part right here, okay? And you're gonna slip it through the hole and we are going to use our uh, CA all around the perimeter up, up by the flange there. A nice thick big gob of it. Push it into place, give it a little spin, hit it with some CA. Accelerator. Uh, CA accelerator, yep. And um, you would also do that around the inside as well. So 
So now it's sealed both on the inside face and the outside face. With that uh, now being in, this is kind of a, a nice, neat, flush fitting on the outside of your watertight cylinder. Um, you can just take your connector and you push it into place, grab the nut, torque it down, and you're done. Sometimes they're a little stubborn to get out, but these are really nice connectors. And like I said, we handle these at the dry docks if you want to get your hands on them. Next one, uh, I wanna talk about running a single wire through. Now this I am going to give full credit to Frank Salerno, who's a member of our Dive Tribe community. Um, he talked about this at the last Dive Tribe meeting that we had. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use some silicone tubing, okay? You can get these, uh, sometimes they're, they're used for aquarium water pumps um, and that kind of thing. There's tons of, of different ones. In this particular case, I think this is a one mil ID, three mil OD piece of silicone tubing. Comes in like huge rolls, 10 foot rolls. What you wanna do, this is a three mil tube and I drilled a three mil hole. So we're gonna pull it out so it's kind of equal on either side. Okay, so already this is um, putting a little bit of pressure on the outside, creating a, a, a little bit of a seal there right now. Now what you can do, if this is the wire that we wanted to pull through, what I would actually do, uh, if you grab a 30 second um, brass rod. So what I'm gonna do, uh, Jason's firing up the soldering gun, we're gonna slip this through this thin brass wire. And we're gonna solder this to the end of it. All right, now that is not coming off. Next step is gonna make your life a lot easier. We're just gonna grab a little bit of our silicone oil and uh, we're gonna put one drop right at the, uh, at the entrance to this hose. There we go. And now you see we just pull it right through. We'll grab the end of it here. We're gonna pull this right through. So now if we look at this, the um, silicone hose is pressed tight against your waterproof bulkhead for your cylinder. The wire is inside. We pulled that through and now it's pushing that hose out. So now um, there is a lot of force being exerted around that uh, inside diameter of that hole. And this is a, a neat connection because it's it's completely floppy. You know, um, you've got a lot of flexibility to move this however you need to move it. Um, Frank has done experiments with it and it seems to be holding up really well. I haven't used this myself. I just kind of tried it for the first time now. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it absolutely works. So if you've got only got, you know, two or three or, or four wires that you need to run through. Again, servo cables would be a good example of that. This might be a good solution to try. Last one we want to talk about are these uh, XT30 connectors. These are small. You could do XT30, XT60, XT90. These are, these are small, um, super handy little suckers. So you've got the male part, which we've soldered our leads to, and then the, the female part that would go to whatever is outside your cylinder, if it's a motor or lights or, or whatever you want. Now, just a note here, the reason we like these XT30s, um, we've tried the Mini Deans connectors and um, they are not sealed all the way. So on the inside of this, the actual like connectors themselves, with the Deans connectors, I've actually found water leaks out through the, uh, past the, the connector and body. So I haven't had any problems with these yet. So what you want to do with that, um, this is a, an example of our from our uh, Mobius Flying Sub conversion kit. Um, these have already been put into place. So you can see it's a nice tidy connection, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is drill um, two holes, the exact spacing of your two leads off the back there. Um, it's kind of important because you wanna make sure that spacing is correct. And then once you've got that done, you're simply going to feed those through. Uh, negative goes towards you, yeah. Then what I'm gonna do is test, push, 
it. It goes in nice. So that's what we wanted. Then we're gonna slather. Um, I'm using gel CA here because it's gap filling. I got a little goober there. There we go. And then we're gonna press this tight against the bulkhead, nestle it in, and uh, accelerate the bond. We let that kick off. Now, that being done, the other thing that you're gonna probably want to do is uh, run like medium CA around the inside, the bases of all of those wires to make sure that we're hitting this not only from the outside, but the inside as well. So I'm just gonna take this medium CA and wick a, a bunch of CA to fill those holes. So there you go, a few different uh, connections that uh, we use here at the Dry Docks with our various builds. Um, what, what's your preferred method for connections? Which ones do you like the best? Uh, I'd probably either go with the waterproof or the XTs. Yeah, these waterproof connectors are nice. The only thing about them is that when you connect them, they kind of, they stick out a long ways. So if you've got room in your cylinder, they're really, really nice. Um, these also come, by the way, in um, three lead variations. So this is two, but you can get them in three, which makes them perfect for servo connections. We use them on the Baleo. We use like 10 of them on the Baleo. We actually have, we carry the large versions of these too. Right, yep, yep. The larger gauge, larger so gauge. they're good for battery connections. So with that, hopefully uh, that's helpful with your project. If you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Um, post them down below in this video or uh, much better, shoot me an email, Bob at NautilusDryDocs.com. With that, we're gonna let you go. Uh, on behalf of the RC Sub Guy and Jason, have a great day and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>